So I wanted to settle the mystic mind debate once and for all because as someone who has a dad that has been playing burn for years, especially now with mystic mind burn being a thing, and me occasionally testing mystic mind burn, I want to settle this debate once and for all since I see a whole bunch of people arguing about it in my comments. I do think it's comical to a degree, but let's just settle it here. Let's, let's put the nail in the coffin, shall we? So let's dive on into it. Make sure that you smash the ever crap out of that subscribe button and the bell and the like button so we can hit 800 and eventually 1,000 subscribers. Be sure, too, that you check out the interview slash deck profile that I did with David Hudson earlier today at the time of me filming this video. By the time you see it, it might be even yesterday. Uh, but it was about a 33-minute long video. We talked about his Nordic deck and his matchups and things like that. It's a really good time. I really enjoyed filming it. So be sure to go and check that out and show it some love. It is a bit of a long video. So if you need to save it to your favorites or your watch later, or even just like the video and you can come on back and it should save your spot. So anyways, I was looking at some comments here before I head off to bed and it's about Sky Strikers winning YCS Hartford. And a lot of the comments that I'm seeing is you know, Mystic Mind is a necessary evil. It's not the Mystic Mind player's fault. People don't like to main deck cards to deal with it. Other people have said Mystic Mind won the YCS, which I wouldn't blame you. Uh, someone said, cry about it. People should have run the out if that was the case. And someone else said, yes and no. Strikers wouldn't have won without Mystic Mind. But Strikers are a very reactive deck that can make the most of the pacing that Mystic Mind brings to the game state. And I understand both sides of the coin to this argument and really what it ends up coming down to is the fact that mystic mind is just inherently an unfair card you know take a deck like that i'm playing right now for example branded eldritch which is the 60 card version from europe and it plays three demise of the land and three mystic mind demise of the land really can't be negated unless it's by something that negates a spell card you know you can't ash demise of the land you have to use solemn judgment you got to use an omni negate etc etc and the thing is is that even if i'm going first and i have mystic mind and i don't really have any other outs or in the case of eldritch if i do have other backup plans i can at least play the mystic mind to put pressure on the opponent you know if i open up not the best and let's say i open up fallen of albaz and i set the albaz activate mystic mind and set three in my back row even if i'm sitting on let's say just as an example sanguine conquistador and gold lane forever you know, I don't have the Golden Lord right out of the gate to make the Golden Lane forever active. However, I do have the Scarlet Sanguine to get to it, and then Conquistor is, of course, a pop. In this example's case, Mystic Mind inherently, and pretty much every time it's played, forces the opponent to negate the card, or to banish it, or to just deal with the card. By me just setting a Fallen of Albaz and playing Mystic Mind and setting back row, you may think, oh, that's, you know, not good. Why would you play the Mystic Mind when you have a monster? But it forces the opponent to either A, get rid of my monster, or B, leave my monster on the board and end on one monster. Because if they run over my monster and they can't deal with the Mystic Mind, well, now the Mystic Mind is doing its job. It's been turned on for the opponent. And now, unless they have back row outs in their main deck, they're just going to lose. I'm going to deck them out because I'm playing 60 cards. I don't even have to do anything. Or I can just, you know, wait until the clock gets down to 30 seconds, bring out Golden Lord and attack for damage, and then just sit on a bunch of back row. You know, that in of itself makes the card very unfair. And we saw something similar to this with Kaiser Coliseum. Now, for those of you who did not play during the time that Kaiser Coliseum was a card, Kaiser Coliseum was a big issue similar to Mystic Mind in a sense, in that it forced the opponent to play at your pace. Mystic Mind does that to a degree, but it's even worse because it is a floodgate that does not allow you to activate effects, does not allow you to attack, and can pretty much just ruin the opponent's entire day. Like even today, I was at Locals and I played against Attic Nister, and I won game one, and then we went to game two, and my opponent just he popped off. He's doing shenanigans. I don't know what the fuck the deck does. I just know it ends on the link six with 6,000 attack. I draw for turn. He's got two in the back row. I've got booty, booty, butt cheeks in my hand, but I've got Mystic Mind. I'm thinking, I'm pretty sure that this works on the Attic Nister thing uh, because I know that some builds started playing Mystic Mind because then they could just sit on the 6,000 beat stick. But anyway, 
I played Mystic Mind. He said, that's fine. I set a Psalm Judgment something else in the background pass. He tried to activate the effect. And of course he called over the judge and the judge said, no, it doesn't affect your monster. It affects you, the player, because you as the player have more number of monsters than in this case I did. So he couldn't activate effects and he was just locked out. And I would just draw, pass, draw, pass. And we just did that for like 10 turns before we finally scooped. I didn't even have to attack. I didn't even have to play the game because he didn't have any sort of back row hate for the Mystic Mine. And, you know, not every deck is going to be playing the Brave Engine, especially now that we've had the ban list hits uh, with Anaconda and things like that. And Kaiser Coliseum, in a similar regard, you know, it, essentially what it did was that it forced both players to have the same number of monsters. So if I had, let's say, an Inspector Border with, you know, three back row, and then I activate Kaiser Coliseum, you are now locked into only summoning one monster because we can both only ever have the same number of monsters on the field. Could you imagine if Branded popped off and just ended on a Mirror Jade with like a Branded in red and some other back row and a Kaiser Coliseum? That would be bananas because now you have a continuous spell floodgate that whether it's at one or three or whatever, it hurts the opponent so much because now they can't play multiple monsters to get around the mirror jade or to force the mirror jade activation to banish a monster and then they just continue with their plays. No, you're locked into that one monster. It's like, what are you going to do? Set a monster and pass? Okay, cool. Mirror Jade's going to swing over it. They can do Branded in Red and do plays. Like, it's very, very powerful in that regard. And especially with things like Branded Eldritch, if you have a Golden Lord in the grave, you can turn off the Mystic Mind whenever you want. Or if you're playing multiple field spells or even just multiple copies of Mystic Mind, if you want to turn off the Mystic Mind, you know, you can use Golden Lord's effect, send a spell trap on the field of the grave, add it to your hand, special summon it. The opponent can't use DD Crow or anything to get the Golden Lord out of your grave because the Mystic Mind's on the field. Then once you're ready to really pop off, you can just set another field spell over the Mystic Mind, and then you're off to the races. You just turn it off on your turn. And a card like that, that has that ability to function like that, I really don't think deserves to exist in the game. And this is coming from someone that really does enjoy playing Mystic Mind Burn. You know, it is a very, I guess for lack of a better term, a fun way to play a burn deck. However, the interactions or lack thereof that the card serves is not healthy for the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. I don't think anyone can argue that Drawing and passing, whether you have a main deck out or not, is healthy for Yu-Gi-Oh. Like, even for audiences, like, no one wants to watch just a drawing and passing game. And people can make the argument, well, you need to play the out. Right, but what if you just never draw that out? What if the out's the last card in your deck? Well, you need to play more outs. Okay, I played more outs, but my opponent had the negate. Now what do I do? Do I just get fucked in the ass because of it? <laughs> like, it, it's just not fair no matter which way you slice it. And I think the fact that Kaiser Coliseum got banned, granted it had it was a ruling fucking nightmare, don't get me wrong, but I think the fact that Kaiser Coliseum served a somewhat similar purpose, I think will lead Mystic Mind to getting banned. Also, the Ultra Ball agrees with me that Mystic Mind needs to get banned, and he's actually been working pretty hard. He caught me a player interview with Dave Hudson running Nordics, so he's actually pulling his own weight for once, that little shit. Now we just need to get the Ultra Banana to do the same thing. You don't know what I'm talking about? Go look at that Mystic Mind deck profile we posted. So, guys, please let me know down in the comments, you know, am I just totally off kilter here? I feel like I say that a lot in my videos, but... You know, is there something I'm missing to the point? I mean, I I feel, I guess, somewhat pleased whenever I'm able to just sit on a Mystic Mine and draw a pass, knowing I have 60 cards in my deck and the opponent can't do jack shit. You know, if you want to top an event, I guess play Mystic Mine, but yet everybody's playing it, so everybody's going to prepare for it, but you still got to draw that out. So, guys, please let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.